Hi, my name is Glenn Fair. I'm here today to show you this Isuzu NPR HD gas with a Hercules cold plate refrigerated insulated body. Before I go uh, into the video, I just want to say if you need to fast forward through certain parts, you know, because you're already familiar with certain details, feel free to do so. I'm going to go through a couple extra steps just to make sure that everybody understands what the uses are for these particular components. So the first thing you're going to say, if you're not already familiar, is Glenn, what is a cold plate body? Well, I'll call it your reefer alternative. Your typical reefer either has a self-contained compressor, which is a box like this in the front, that runs on diesel gasoline. Uh, if you've got a diesel truck, it goes right into the existing diesel gas tank. If it's a gas truck like this, you'll have a separate diesel gas tank. Obviously, for some drivers, that could create um, confusion, we'll say. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it is an option. The other option is what they call a two-piece, or if you're familiar with home air conditioning, maybe a mini split, or even let's just compare it to your car's air conditioning. Your car's air conditioning, you need to start that vehicle up. You need to have it running for the air conditioner to run. It's the same thing with a two-piece unit. You need to start it up, have the compressor running under the hood, then it gets the stuff to the uh, condenser, blows the cool air over the body, and keeps it going. Well, in a cold plate, you don't have any of that. What you have is cold plates, just like it says. So you're gonna plug it up the night before. As you can see right here, this kind of looks like your typical electric standby block. Uh, this particular one, we engineered for 230 volt, three phase. Other options are available if you need it. Um, but what happens is you plug it up at night, it cools off the box, it cools off the uh, cells. This particular application we're doing negative 20 degrees because he hauls frozen food. And when your guys come in in the morning, the box is cool, they're ready to go. As the day goes, the temperature does rise, which is why we want to make sure that when we spec the body, we spec it right for you. Here we had the Hercules uh, representative come out to us, uh, come out and see the customer and make sure that the customer got exactly what they were chasing uh, in the application. One other thing that I notice here, on off toggle switch right here. On one of his older units, it's a control that's inside the box, uh, inside the cab. When they moved that box from one cab to the other, they needed to redo all that wiring. It cost more money, obviously. Um, still saving over the life of the box, but not only does it say that, but he had the truck locked up. I said, hey, you know what, let's turn it on and check it out. He had to go inside, get the key for the truck, come back out, open it up, you know, turn the unit on, go back out, back inside, return the key, and then when he needed to, he needed to go back and remember to turn the unit off to lock up the truck, the whole nine yards. Extra steps. If you've got it right here and easy to get to, it works really quick. Um, obviously, that only works for the charging, so, you're not worried about like hey somebody hit the switch during the day some kid came up and hit the switch it's not going to make my uh, box any colder or any warmer it's going to be the same because of the way the cold plates work also right here on the side something hercules has done let's put the thermometer right here i see it when i look out this win this uh, mirror here out the side window i think that that's a good thing um it kind of keeps the attention on hey there's a thermometer there i should check the temperature over time, uh, you know, hopefully it trains your drivers. If they're not already trained, they'll be checking it more often, hopefully, uh, just to make sure that everything's copacetic and that we keep the temperature that you're looking for. Also, you're going to see here, one thing Hercules does, there's no end cap. They actually just bring the rails together. I find that to be a nice thing. Um, I can't say it for sure, but when I look at it, I say it looks to me like it's more stable. There's less pieces and less missing pieces. Your typical end cap, for instance, they bring this rail up and then they cut it short. And then they bring the top rail across and they cut it short. And they bring the roof rail over and then they tie it all together with the end cap. Well, that's more pieces that can go wrong. Uh, I'm looking to keep my body insulated, secured, everything that I kind of like this extra detail. I think it's a nice thing. I also tend to think, and again, I don't know this, but I almost feel that if a tree hits that corner, it's going to round out a lot easier than if it was on an end cap where it might catch part of it and then just tear the whole thing off. Um, obviously with a grab handle there, 
uh, you might be more susceptible to that, but actually the grab handle might help too. I don't know. There's also going to be these three folding steps here. In three folding steps, get your, uh, you or your mechanic right up to the compressor. Um, obviously, to me, that's going to be a benefit because they can get there quick. They don't have to pull out the big, you know, 17 foot ladder, put up the safety equipment and all that kind of stuff. If it's something like, hey, I just need to do a reset um, or I just want to check something. Uh, I, obviously, insurance regulations are going to require you to be as safe as you can. Um, but let's be honest, when the mechanics can just get up there really quick and look at it, it means that there's less downtime and that means that it's making you money more often. Um, when I look here, I tend to find, you know, the side panels look like they're typical. This looks a little bit wider. It could be because of the way it's ridged. Um, I'm not used to seeing it quite, or at least look quite so big, but I kind of think that it's nice because when I look underneath, I see that the channels tie into it and then you've got the floor. So your flooring isn't right here. Your flooring actually comes in about here. Uh, to me, that's a benefit because it's going to keep more of it colder. Um, some of the other ones that I've seen, they have the floor meet here. And the downside there is when something happens, like let's say a, a rivet pops out, uh, you know, then you're going to have the insulation oozing out. But that's also another thing when I look underneath, because I looked all underneath this body and under a lot of the bodies that I see, I usually see the insulation oozing out. I don't see that here on Hercules. Um, Yes, it's not really a problem. Uh, it's just going out of some uh, drainage ports, but I just like a finished product. I like it to look good. I like it to be good. I also like that here at every uh, cross member, they gusset it to the long cells. To me, that's quality. Um, one of the big particular problems you see when your body starts rusting is that the long sill and the cross members start to separate and the reason they start to separate is because where you have welds it's most susceptible to rusting first well we can't control the road salt right what can we control well we can control we can make it a little bit stronger we can make it more durable we can put in those gussets to me um if i see those gussets i tend to think that it's going to last longer and hercules likes to pride themselves on saying hey we're the second and third generation body because you could take this body, you could move it to the next truck and the next truck. Um, obviously, depending on how you care for it will make a difference. Uh, but the fact that they like to live on that, as opposed to a lot of the body companies that just say, hey, we're building a new box every time. I think that that uh, attention to looking long term is really wise of them. You'll see that there's two bumpers here and two holdbacks. The reason is because I've got a three panel door back here. Now you're going to say, why a three panel door? Well, when you look at a three panel door, most times for this particular application, the guys just need to go in, get their stuff and come out. Once in a while, they need to load a pallet in there um, or they need to unload a pallet. You know, they do some long, tr long runs. They've got distributors throughout the area and they just need to go there, get the stuff off the truck and go. So they need to have access to opening the whole thing up. So we went with a three pallet door. That way we keep the center part down to, uh, I'd say that's about 42 to 48 inches. I think that's a 42 inch opening. Um, your guys get in, they get their stuff, they get out. But when you need to do the whole thing, you open it right up, boom, you've got access. You're also gonna notice down here, you've got a Chicago style step bumper. See, you've got one, two, three steps into the truck that's going to be great for your guys uh, for your crew that is going to be safer for when they walk in um, obviously if you could take a couple steps especially when like this they're self-cleaning steps so you get the snow and ice in the winter time or you happen to be in a muddy parking lot and they walk up into the truck it clears out of their boots a little bit but it also keeps them from slipping beautiful thing obviously for insurance reasons and for employee longevity um, but you also get the benefit of the dock bumper. This particular one is lower. Uh, usually you tend to put the dock bumper up high, but we went lower because there are some low docks that this particular person experiences um, that they want to be able to back up to. And they uh, wanted to have it so that you can make sure each of these bar lock latches 
is here. Some other companies, when you have that uh, dock bumper or uh, Chicago style step bumper, what they do is they'll put either a down post or they won't have anything inside at all and they'll just count on one door holding the other door back. I've had a customer that has said, hey, I feel like it's not staying secure. It feels like it's always open. My cooler is running longer uh, because of that. And here, especially in a cold plate, you don't want that. But even on a regular unit, you don't want that because that means your box is getting hotter, your cooler is working harder. If it's working harder, it's going to die sooner. And you don't want that. Um, you're investing a lot of money to begin with and making sure that you get the right body, that you want to make sure that every step you can get to make sure that this thing lasts as long as it does and performs like it should, you want to make sure you do. As I open up the bar lock here, so a quick note on bar lock, um, that's what I call this. That's the, the big name brand for it. Um, it's kind of like saying, when you look at cellar doors, you say the Bilco doors, but there's other people that make them. It's kind of the same way. Other people can make these particular latches, but I still call them bar locks because that's the new name. I swing it open. And the first thing you see here is a freezer curtain. Now, why do I want a freezer curtain? Again, keep more cold air in, keep less coming out. You want to keep the temperature, I don't, I can't say it enough. You want to keep the temperature as cool as you can, as long as you can. So whatever you could do to keep that insulation in is a beautiful thing. As I go in here, I'm going to point up to the roof. Watch the light. So I'm not touching any switch on the wall. It found my motion. It's a motion sensor light with timer. Uh, this is a beautiful thing when... Look, it's Friday. You, your guys get home, or Saturday, whatever it may be. Your guys get back, they plug the truck in, they got the material in there, it's cooling off, they forgot to turn off the light. They come in Monday morning, it's 5 a.m., that truck doesn't start. That's really gonna cost you a lot of money because that truck is not gonna be out working. Um, one of the other things you see right away, on the ceiling, I've got four cooling panels. And on the front wall, I've got one. So again, for this application, this is what was right. Um, we wanted to do negative 20 degrees. He delivers frozen foods. This is what was right. These are the parts that get cold. It keeps the body cold. There's no thermostat control like a cold plate might typically have because it was engineered specifically for this product. Uh, this particular customer keeps his trucks he does second generation, third generation body swaps, so he wants to keep it going for as long as he can. Other things you're going to see is the scuff plate and the floor. Let's talk about the scuff plate first. You might look at that and say, wow, that seems like it's really high. You know, that's about uh, 24 inches up, 18 to 24 inches up. Why is it so high? Well, what we did was we looked at his existing trucks, and we saw that when you have your typical scuff, well... There is no real typical, but let's just say most times, a lot of companies are gonna stop the scuff right about here. Um, but right here, his guys were banging into the walls. When they bang into the walls, what happens? You get a hole there, you get a hole there, you've now got water getting into your insulation, it's creating mold, it's creating other stuff. Just giving that extra attention to detail to go higher on the scuff, to make sure your guys don't puncture the walls, uh, it's a beautiful thing because it really does save you in the long run. And the scuff, to take it up a couple inches when you're building it, it doesn't cost that much money. Uh, a couple hundred bucks, but it's worth every penny. I've had uh, guys who do chicken, uh, he was one in 48 inches up. I say, that's kind of high, are you sure that's right? We walk out, we look at his trucks, he needed 48 inches up. When his guys load with the pallet jacks, they bang it into the wall, and a lot of times the stuff is already sticking out of the pallet jacks or of the pallets. So it's banging into the wall, creating a hole. He knows what he needs. It's a beautiful thing to think about. Also, what you see here, your typical insulated body, you've got a nice uh, gel coat on the inside wall. The benefit to that, obviously, is that you know, you're going to have water coming down the walls and go right down to the floor and go out. Um, you don't want it building on the walls like in a plywood or anything like that, like a typical box truck would have, because that's going to create contamination hazards. It's also not, um, <laughs> let's just say it's not healthy and it's not necessarily going to be approved uh, if your truck was ever get, to get stopped. But you want to make sure that you've got a nice smooth wall. Any refrigerated application is pretty much going to have that. 
um, on the floor. So this floor is called a hat style anti-skid. So it's anti-skid because of these ridges here. Um, just like with the bumper, when your guys get into the truck, especially here, you know, you're going to have uh, cold air in here and it's going to be freezing. Well, what's going to happen with water drips? It's going to freeze. You don't want your guys slipping, you don't want them falling. Um, and again, each floor is uh, specialized for the application that it's going to be uh, used for. So if you're doing just produce, maybe you just need a, uh, I'm going to call it a ridged floor, where it's just waved. Um, so that it's nice and easy for you to get the water out. Um, but if you're having meats and other contaminating uh, possible uh, items, then you definitely want to go for this because, or if you're putting boxes on the floor, uh, because you want to get the air under it. You want to make sure it stays cool. Um, this is where it comes beneficial because you're going to drain all the stuff out as quickly as possible. These channels go to channels in the front and rear that run horizontally and there's drain holes in each corner now you want to in my opinion you want the drain holes in each corner as often as possible because which by the way lights out uh like i said it's on the timer um and look i just wave boom it's right back on again but the drainage holes in each corner get the water out the fastest uh it also creates less buildup um for I think it was something about a hundred bucks. You get those two extra drainage holes, maybe 200 bucks, but it's worth every penny, especially if you're gonna have like raw chicken or seafood or raw meat. You wanna get all that stuff out of the truck and away from the other products because you can't have cross-contamination. Um, you know as well as I do, if you have cross-contamination, that insurance policy is not going to uh, favor you. Um, as you can see, I'm just taking steps down from the truck, real easy egress. With that Chicago style step bumper, real easy to get out of. Um, when I look at this Hercules body, by standard, they have the steel uh, corners. Some companies will, you know, do a white painted one by default, and these are options with Hercules. That's all it is. Uh, economies of scale, it saves them money, which is a good thing. And then I come right back around here to the roadside. One more bumper for this third door, one more holdback, and then around to the truck. You can see another video of mine to see more on the Isuzu cab. Um, but one of the quick things that I do want to point out, well, two quick things actually, is one visibility, line of sight. If I touch the front cab right here, I'm only maybe three feet away, but the driver at an average of let's just say five foot ten inches is going to see my belly button that means that if you have uh if you're in a city and your guys get out of the truck they go they start unloading the back some kid gets into the front or something's in the front of the truck or you know somebody's playing basketball and loses the ball you're going to see them a heck of a lot quicker than you will in a conventional style truck because your line of sight is phenomenal um, but on top of that is Zuzu takes the extra step to do the extended bumper this is by default you're not going to get any other options and when i look at some of the competitors you know they have a flat front and the bumper is basically nice and flat with it well i've had people that are typical uh conventional truck drivers that say hey i feel like i'm on top of the road i feel like it's not safe when i look at say uh the competitors where it's nice and flat all the way down i can see that um because you know I hit a pickup truck like that and that bumper is going to be right about my grill maybe a little bit lower than my grill but part of it's going to be in my grill so if I'm hitting it I do feel like I'm kind of close um, and yes the cabs are engineered to be as safe as possible but from a safety uh, mental standpoint as soon as you take the, the frame of the truck all the way out to the front here then they put a steel plate down and then they put a dressing bumper on it just like your car does uh, but that means that if an accident does happen the whole frame of the truck from front to back is absorbing that impact so what that means for you is a safety aspect uh, it gets hit the whole truck absorbs the impact that means that the cab's not crinkling as quickly as it would if it was a, a flat frame you know just like uh, in your conventional truck when you say hey 
um, some people put these big uh, uh, Okay, generic term, I call it a people pusher bumper on the front. You know, it's got these big grills, a cattle uh, bumper, and they say, well, that's from a safety perspective. And, you know, up in New York City, you know, I need that, you know, to keep people away and stuff like that. Well, that's one of the benefits here. Uh, you want a safety perspective. You want this uh, extra bit of security for when your drivers get behind that truck. The other thing you're going to see is visibility, but we're going to address that in another video. If you want to see the video on the Isuzu MPR cab, please, by all means, check it out in my YouTube channel. Again, my name is Glenn. I'm at 856-777-TRUCK. We deliver nationwide at truckspyglenn.com. And have a great day.